Hello class, this is Professor Krauss coming to you with uh, the, our next lecture on the resurrection. Uh, this week, week four, we've been looking at what Christians believe about sin, what Christians believe about Jesus and why he died on the cross, and now we are going to look at the resurrection. Let me begin with prayer. Father, thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And I thank you for the chance to teach on the resurrection and share the good news that Jesus did not stay dead in the tomb, but rose to new life, conquering death. And God, all those who believe in Jesus for salvation also have the promise of being raised to new life, just like Jesus we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so resurrection. As we looked at in the last lecture, the cross quickly became the symbol of Christianity. Uh, although it was a symbol of death, uh, specifically Jesus' death on the cross, it was also a recognition that without sacrifice, without Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, there was no hope for us in being freed from our sins. Forgiveness, which is the removal of our sins, is not possible without Jesus on the cross and what he accomplished there. But, as important as Jesus' death on the cross is, it means nothing if he stays in the tomb. Every other important religious leader died and remained dead. Only Christianity claims that their Savior uh, that our Savior still lives. And I know of no other religion where God dies, comes back to life to save his people, but this is what Christians believe. Now, the hope of Christianity rises and falls on the person of Jesus, and if we want to get even more specific, on his death on the cross and his bodily resurrection, meaning that when Jesus uh, came back to life, um, Christians believe that he came back in bodily form. And our hope for eternal life, uh, a Christian's hope that one day we will be raised from the, from the grave uh, and to live forever with God rests on the truth of what Jesus accomplished uh, in his uh, death on the cross, but then overcoming the grave in his resurrection. Unfortunately, it is a sad reality that every single one of us are going to die one day. Uh, we don't know when, but Christianity teaches that we never have to fear death because Jesus has overcome it. And by overcoming death, when we put our faith in Him, rather than fearing death, we can trust that we too will have eternal life. Disobedience, as we've seen multiple times from Genesis 3, disobedience by Adam and Eve in the garden brought sin and death, not just for them, but for the entire world. We are therefore under a curse of death. Again, we are all going to die one day, and there's nothing we can do to save ourselves from that death. But the good news that Christianity offers to all people is that by believing in Jesus, uh, we not only receive eternal life, but we receive new life right here and now. We become a new person. Yes, we will still die physically one day, but we do not fear that death because we know that it's only a temporary resting place because of what God's Word tells us about resurrection. Now, John 3.16, one of the most known and loved and uh, remembered verses in the entire Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have uh, or receive everlasting life. Now, to not perish doesn't mean that we're not going to die, but more it means we're not going to perish eternally, that our life, while we might lose it physically, we gain it spiritually uh, because of God's love. Now, in the Gospels, there are Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books of the New Testament. We find these resurrection stories, eyewitness accounts of what took place after Jesus' death. 
Now, I want you to pause your recording right now, and I want you to look up Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12, and read that. Now, in Luke chapter 24, we find one of these accounts of what took place. And the high points of Luke's account of the resurrection all begins with these women who knew Jesus, followed Jesus, supported Jesus, loved Jesus so much, and so they are absolutely heartbroken at his death. Uh, They go on the first day of the week, which would have been Sunday, they go to the tomb to anoint his body. This was a way to show respect and a way, you know, to to show their final act of love for him would be to anoint the body with uh, herbs and different things. But when they get there, they find that the stone had been rolled away. Despite having guards that were there, uh, the, these guards that were you know, guarding his body to make sure no one stole it, uh, the, the stone had already been rolled away. Uh, the idea would have been that these harmless women, when they came, the these these guards, and there would probably have been you know a few guards accessible to help move the stone out of the way. The women would have anointed the body; it would have been closed forever. But they get there; the guards are not guarding it. The stones rolled away. They go in there. The body is not there. And even more, the burial clothes were right where his body had been laid. The angels appear and they remind these women of Jesus' teaching. That he had already taught them before that he was going to die and be raised from the grave. Why didn't the women you know, trust in these teachings of Jesus? Well, maybe because they were still in shock. Uh, maybe despite Jesus' teaching, they um, didn't truly believe or they believed something else that maybe in G- Jesus would die now and he would be raised at a further time. Uh, but in the end, the angels remind them, why are you looking for him here? He's not here. He is alive. The, the ladies run back to tell the male disciples who did not go to anoint the body. Uh, they are hiding, scared of what would happen if these religious leaders that killed Jesus found them. The women uh, testify to what they see, and we read that Peter um, Peter ran to the tomb. He looks in and sees, and he goes back, marveling at what took place, now probably remembering what Jesus had taught them. Jesus also appears to his disciples and to non-disciples after his death and resurrection. So, for example, the very beginning of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15 uh, is all about Jesus' resurrection, and not just factual, historical points of his resurrection, but why the resurrection is so important, essential for the Christian faith. So at the very beginning of the the uh, book, uh, chapter 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, Now I'll remind you, brothers, of the gospel, which we're going to talk about in the next lecture. Gospel means good news. The good news I preached to you, which you received, in which you now stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, that He appeared to uh, Peter, then to the twelve. Then He appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep, meaning they have died. Then He appeared to James, then to all the apostles. So, Paul's doing something important here on a couple of levels. First, Paul is describing uh, the significance of the teaching that he uh, preached, uh, the the things that he taught these first, the, the, the people in Corinth, that when he came to Corinth, he taught them all about Jesus' death and resurrection. But he also gives this testimony that after Jesus was raised from the grave, that he appeared to one of the disciples, Peter, He appeared to the other disciples, and then he appeared to over 500 people. Now, why would this be so significant? Is is Peter, Paul is inviting people, he is inviting doubters, 
um, that hear this story of Jesus' death and resurrection, hey, if you still doubt that this is a fact, you can go and find these people. You can go hear their story. You can hear their eyewitness account. And not just one person, but hundreds of people who actually saw him in his body um, after his death. Now, I want to share some of the theories against the resurrection while also showing why I, why I believe that there are some difficulties in these theories against the resurrection. Uh, first, there's the swoon theory that Jesus did not really die, but merely fainted. Real quick note, these will be on your final exam, and so not all of them, but you'll be uh, need to provide uh, what these different theories mean. So make sure you mark this and study them. But the problem with the swoon theory is really twofold if we look at it objectively. First, the Romans were masters of death. When you read the Bible, when you read other historical documents, you see the, the likelihood of them mistaking someone for being dead when they really weren't is very unlikely. And number two, there was too much riding on Jesus' death for the Romans and the Jews to make the mistake of leaving him alive accidentally. Uh, number two, the hallucination theory. That Jesus was actually dead the whole time, the disciples merely hallucinated the whole thing. One of the problems with this theory is that too many people um, saw Jesus after he was dead, uh, when he came back from the grave. And not just one time, but for 40 days, there were different points that Jesus showed up, sometimes to one person, sometimes to a group, sometimes to a large crowd. And so to say that just one person is hallucinating, okay, we could buy that. But when you're saying dozens and then hundreds of people are hallucinating, little tougher to believe that one. The third theory sometimes offered is the legend of the myth theory, that over time the stories of Jesus uh, grew and were exaggerated. So some of the things about Jesus' life are true, but this whole thing about coming back from the grave is just a legend that grew over and over and over. But this theory doesn't explain, again, the eyewitness accounts that, that Paul would invite anyone who has doubts or questions about it to you know go and talk to these people. But then even more, the, the, the big problem with the, this legend myth theory are the people who died for Jesus afterwards. You know, if, if you're going to die for what you believe in, okay. But when if you know that it's a lie, if you know that it's just a myth you've been making up, no one's going to die for that in the end. And many of Jesus' closest followers died for their faith. Uh, the fourth one, the stolen body theory. This is one that people often you know, point to. Either the Jews, Romans, or the disciples stole his body. Um, here's some possible problems with this theory. Number one, the Jews wouldn't have stolen the body. They wanted him dead. They wanted proof that he was dead because all of this talk about being God, all this teaching about coming back from the grave, if suddenly his body's stolen, there's the, there's the chance that people are going to say, well, yeah, you know, he's, ra- he's risen from the grave. The Jews don't want this. Uh, the second thing for the Romans, the Romans didn't have any reason to steal the body. And again, this would not have benefited them in any way. If Jesus really was an insurrectionist trying to start a riot, they would want his body to remain dead in that tomb. It, it is, again, hard to continue an insurrection if your main leader is dead in a tomb, if, if he turned out to be a fraud. So the Romans would have not wanted the body stolen either. Now, the disciples couldn't have stolen the body, number one, because it was guarded by the Roman guards, um, and they would have lost their lives uh, if, if somebody took the body. But also, again, it doesn't benefit the disciples to steal his body. If they steal his body and he's still dead, then they're just living a lie. They are literally trying to start a religion that they don't even really believe in because the dead body's the proof. So these these three groups, the Jews, the Romans, and the disciples, you could argue that one or both of them or, or, or multiple groups got together to steal his body, but it doesn't really help any of their causes. Um, it, it only um, helps, you know, it only helps really the disciples if he comes back from the grave and stealing his body, uh, you would only have a dead body of a false savior, false messiah. And then there's the Muslim theory for those who are um, uh, Muslims, follow the Islamic religion. God switched the body of Jesus, the prophet, 
right before he was on the cross, meaning that they actually buried an imposter and Jesus did not die on the cross and was raised from the grave. Um, So, again, each of these theories attempt to find a hole in the explanation offered for Jesus' resurrection. Uh, Because it is supernatural, you know, God raising Jesus from the dead, uh, anyone opposed to a supernatural God is going to have to offer an explanation as to why the resurrection is not real. Uh, reasons to believe the resurrection, this is the final slide I want to offer, uh, is uh, number one, uh, reason. These, these are reasons why I believe you should consider the resurrection even if you have serious doubts. Here are six reasons that maybe you should consider doing some more research, reading the biblical accounts and even historical accounts about this. Uh, number one, the radical change in the disciples after he was raised. Um, again, if... Uh, the the if Jesus really was uh, dead and he stayed dead, uh, it's hard to explain how radically these disciples who went and hid for their life they are scared to death that the authorities are going to come after them. But all of a sudden, after he is raised, the disciples have this new passion and this new um, courage that they they live with to share the good news of Jesus. Number two, the willingness of the disciples to die. Uh, There are so many testimonies, not only in the Bible, but in other documents of how the disciples of Jesus died for their faith. When they were asked to recant their faith, when they were asked to turn away from Jesus, they died and you would not die for a lie. Uh, Number three, his appearance to women and their eyewitnesses. As we looked at in the other lecture, in the last lecture, when it comes to the cross, um, also, if you were trying to start a new religion, uh, you would not use women as your primary eyewitnesses because they did not have much weight in a court of law. And yet, Christians point to the women, those who follow Jesus, those who love Jesus very much. Uh, they were the first one. They were the ones standing by the cross when he was crucified. They were the ones that went to the tomb and saw the empty tomb first. Uh, They were the ones that continued to follow Jesus even after he was raised from the grave. And so um, the very fact that Christians from the very beginning said, hey, you should listen to the the eyewitness account of these women. Um, They're not trying to hide anything. They're just trying to tell you what is true. Uh, There were numerous appearances after his resurrection, not only to his followers, but also to larger crowds. Um, And these these appearances have never been disproved by groups that didn't want Christianity to to be a religion. Uh, The Jews and Romans. If the Jews and Romans could have ever at any point proved Jesus had not been raised from the grave, then Christianity crumbles. But they've never been able to. There's never been a substantial argument from Jews or Romans. Um, And again, it really helps them out if Jesus is still dead. If they're able to go to a tomb and show the disciples, like, here's his body, or other people, skeptics, here's his body, then then Christianity crumbles. But they weren't able to because Jesus came back from the grave um, and, and did not remain dead. And then, um, conversion of two skeptics. Number one, James, the half-brother of Jesus. Jesus had uh, half-brothers, one of them James, who doubted Jesus from the very beginning of his ministry. And yet Jesus, James, after his death and resurrection, became one of his closest followers and leading churches and ultimately giving his life for the cause of Christ. And then Saul, which we're going to hear more and more about as we go throughout this course, Saul was a hater of of Christianity, hated the name of Jesus, and yet Jesus uh, appeared um, in a special way to Saul on the Damascus Road, and you can read about that in the book of Acts, and and Saul completely is transformed. Saul was a hater of Christians, even put them to death. He hated them so much, and he renounced his old ways and followed Christ even Um, later on to to torture, to imprisonment, all those things for the name of Jesus. And so you have two skeptics who were very much against Christianity, but who uh, when they studied and when they followed, when they saw with their own eyes what uh, not only Jesus, but these other followers of Jesus, they changed their tune and began to follow Jesus too. So here are these, this lecture was a... um, 
a way to kind of understand not only what the Bible says about resurrection, but why resurrection was so important. Jesus was raised from the grave to show that his death for sin was acceptable. Uh, that that he was he did not stay dead. God raised him victorious over death. That anyone who believes in Jesus for salvation, not only are your sins forgiven, but you receive eternal life, so you no longer have to fear death. If you have any questions, any way that I can help you uh, with this this lecture, please make sure to email me or leave a comment uh, here on this YouTube video, um, and uh, we'll see you soon with the next lecture. God bless.